Hello everyone, I am Shomesh Shanapati, Assistant Professor, Bedang Institute of Technology. Hope you are doing well. So, in this class, we will discuss about how to derive longitudinal stress. In our previous classes, we have already discussed how to derive hoop stress. So, we will understand what is longitudinal stress. Okay. So, <coughs> so, in longitudinal stress, if the stress arises along length side, that is termed as our longitudinal stress. In length direction, what is length direction? We will understand here. If our cylinder is like this, the stresses are along lengthwise direction. We will understand that by using our notebook. So, as we have already understood about thin cylinder, what is the thickness? Here, it is the thickness of the cylinder. Okay. So, if it is your cylinder, what happens? This to this is your length. So, in case of circumferential stress, as I have already said, what circumferential stress arises like this thin cylinder is completely filled with our high pressure fluid. So, it will act like this. Okay. So, it will act like this. So, the bursting force will burst the thin cylinder into these pieces. One piece is like this and another one is like this. Okay, so here it is about what your circumferential stress. In case of longitudinal stress, it will burst like this. Okay, like this paper. This paper also have some in, in, in initial stress. Okay, so this is not break into pieces. Like if the paper is not changes or breaks into pieces, how the material? That material has the internal stress. So, that internal stress is your what? As we have already studied, resistance stress. And the inside, inside pressure gives us what? Bursting force. Okay. So, this inside high pressure wants us to what? To make the material break into like this. After breaking, it will form this type of structure. Okay. We will understand that later. As we have already discussed, our longitudinal stress is denoted by what? Sigma L. And the formula for longitudinal stress is our PD upon 4 T. So, your P is the pressure inside the thin cylinder and diameter is here. If here it is the circular section, so the diameter will be this to this, only inside diameter. We will understand this from here. Late, we have the cylinder as Don't focus on the diagram, the perfection of the diagram. Just focus on what is your thickness and what is your diameter. So, here, this to this is your internal diameter. Okay. And here, this to this is your thickness. We will take this as thickness. Next. I have written here the stress which is developed in the longitudinal direction as I have already said longitudinal direction means in our lengthwise direction of a cylinder due to what due to our fluid pressure is known as longitudinal stress it is denoted by sigma L and formula for it as for PD upon 40. 
so in this class we will derive what is how it becomes sigma a equals to p d upon 4 t how it becomes so to derive it we need one thin cylinder to take the example of thin cylinder okay we will take the example here so as we have known what our thickness is this to this and in diameter is here so after after the bursting force done its work burst the thin cylinder what happens if the bursting force uses the longitudinal stress then it will burst like this here so one end is like this we can see it in this way also if we see the top view what do we see we will see one circle and like this okay so here is our inside diameter and this to this our thickness so what happened next to solve this till now what we have we have sigma l equals to p d upon 40 but as we have already learned what our inside pressure has high amount of pressure okay but take that as our billion our bursting force is our what the billion okay Take the billion as what? F B. So to resist that billion, what we have? Our resistance force. That will term as F R. Up to certain point, billion and hero both fight. Up to certain point, then decided by them who will win okay like this up to certain point f b equals to f r we know that also as per newton's third law every action has equal and opposite reaction so to resist bursting force the material generates what resistance force so we will understand here f b how f b generated okay so if b is generated by inside pressure where is inside pressure here we can see here the inside pressure is inside the thin cylinder okay so what we will take to understand about inside pressure what we will take we, as we have known what our force is equals to pressure into area okay we know that p equals to f by a so force equals to p into a we know p is considered as p only to find out our area we will take what here our inside diameter that is di and but as here total this total we will take because this total is filled with our fluid so we will take what the area of the circle that will be our pi by 4 t square we know the area of circle is what pi by 4 t square so we can write here p into a that is our bursting area so our f b will be p into pi by 4 upon t square along what along our length length is here l so here we can understand okay we have taken this part 
right but also the thin cylinder is what way this to this right or wrong okay so we will consider this area of the circle with length l pi by 4 d square into what l we will take it as our equation 1 so next is our what resistance force resistance force is applied by what our thin cylinder or our metal so the metal has the thin metal has the what resistance force so here you can see as we have already known this is for bursting okay to resist this what we have thickness of the this to this this green part is our resisting part okay so what do we have here this resisting part is only the metal area so how to calculate this here by taking this example as we have known this complete circular portion is for what bursting force so we have only this part this thickness so if we do this like this so what we will have our perimeter of the circle so we are here resistance force our f r equals to resistance force is for what sigma l right or wrong sigma l so sigma l into area so as we have already studied above, we have already understood as we are taking why we are taking the perimeter right so sigma l into area will be our what this area will be our resisting area pi into d square small d you can take this as small t small d into along length so we will take this length so here we got our second equation next so as we have what fb and fr now equalizing fb and f r we can write p into pi by 4 d square equals to sigma l into pi d square into l so we can cancel here our pi with pi here only pi d sorry our perimeter is pi d only this d with this okay so what do we have now p d upon 4 equals to here we got one l so this l with l this l so we got p d by 4 is equals to where is our thickness here as we have completely forgotten forgotten about our thickness we will take the perimeter but with what our thickness and length with this thickness and length right so here 
sigma l into pi d into t into l. So, here we will have sigma l into t. So, this sigma l will be p d upon 4 t. Right? So, we got what is our longitudinal stress. We have proved it. Okay, this derivation is of uh, if hoop stress and longitudinal stress, then it will be of 5 parts. So, we have what our hoop stress and longitudinal stress. Now, we will see about the relationship. So, we know what sigma c is equal to p d upon 2 t and sigma l equals to p d upon 4 t. So, by equalizing this, we can also write like this, sigma c upon sigma l equals to p d upon 2 t divided by p d upon 4 t. So, this P D and P D will cancel. What do we got? Sigma C by sigma L equals to 1 by 2. And that does mean hoop stress divided with longitudinal stress is our what? 1 by 2. So, we can write here. Sigma C equals to Wait, wait, wait. Sure. But PD open. 2t divided by pd upon 4t. We can write it pd upon 2t multiply with 4t upon pd. t t cancel 2 with 4 as what? 2. That does mean sigma c upon sigma l equals to 2. So, we got what? Sigma c equals to 2 of sigma l. Right? That does mean this hoof stress is about is about double of longitudinal stress. Okay. Also, sigma L equals to what? One by two of sigma C. Okay. If only one stress is given, we will take that as hoof stress. So, sigma L is our what? Half of hoof stress and hoof stress is multi two, type, two times of our longitudinal stress. Okay. So, in, uh, till now we have understood about how to derive longitudinal stress. In our next class, we will understand some, by using some, uh, uh, some numericals, we will solve hoof stress and longitudinal stress. Thank you so much.